I am joined today with the founder and CEO of Custodia Bank, Caitlin Long, for a very important conversation about the economy, what is going on with Custodia, and of course, Bitcoin. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. We are here at Rare Evo in our home city, Sin City, which is the name of our crypto channel, Sin City Crypto. And so we're excited to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time. We literally ran into you yesterday. Yeah. And you were so gracious with, with your time and say, hey, I can talk tomorrow. And so here we are. Um, I do, I do want to start. You're very welcome. I do want to start and ask, you know, a lot of people in our space have come to know of Custodia Bank as they got screwed over by the Fed, yeah. right? And so what is the importance of that Fed master account that you guys have been going after uh, for so long? Well, what, it, what we're really after at a high level is serving the banking industry, or serving the banking needs of this space, which has been targeted now really three times in a row. Uh, it was, we didn't call it Operation Choke Point back when, it, you know, in 2013, 2014, and then it happened again in like 2017. And then it, it's happening again, and it's been there've been three waves of it. Uh, we are also here to provide a safe and sound bridge between TradFi and the Bitcoin and crypto ecosystems, because as we learned with a couple of the banks that failed, uh, you got to be super careful how you manage a U.S. dollar bank that banks this industry because of how fast. The crypto flows settlement, they settle, they settle 24-7, 365 right. as well, whereas U.S. dollars settle during Fedwire hours, and, and that inherent mismatch creates some risks as well. So you have to be super careful how you manage those things, and that's what Custodia is set up to do. Uh, we, we've been operating now for almost two years. That's amazing. Uh, without issue. and 100% uh, backed, right? We are 100% back. That's not and, good, actually. That's why. Uh, that's the exact reason why they've denied you. I'm kidding, well, of course. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, who knows? You know, um, I've, I've, as time has gone on, it's become clearer and clearer that the denial was politically motivated. And uh, it, it's also, I've had the opportunity to talk to people who've been willing to talk about what happened. It was it was political. They, they confirmed that. And yeah. it's also our original sin was our association with Bitcoin. Such and shame. and so it, everything they said about us was back papering the file. Right. And it was an overreaction to FTX. Um, the, the discovery in the lawsuit showed that the vice chair for supervision at the Fed, Michael Barr, held a meeting about Custodia two weeks after FTX failed. Ah, and the first draft of the denial letter appeared a couple of days later. It was all around Thanksgiving 2022. Um, but uh, but long story short, the, back to the, the mission, that's what we're trying to do. That's why we need the Fed master account, because banks, unfortunately, have debanked this space. I will defend the banks. It's not mostly the banks. Right. It's the regulators putting pressure on the banks behind the scenes. Yeah. And if, if, if a crypto native company has its own Fed master account, which is what Custodia is after, and Kraken yeah. is after, a couple of other Wyoming speedy banks. Is have Coinbase been... after it as well? Uh, uh, their... No, that there are four Wyoming speedy banks that okay. have charters. Two of what two of us are operating. Got it. And uh, and the whole idea is we don't want to have to rely on an intermediary bank that might debank us. Right. Let's let's control our own destiny by having our own Fed master account. There are incredible economics behind it as well. Uh, it is it is it is publicly disclosed that banks charge up to a 100 times markup on the wholesale cost for the retail <laughs> cost of Fedwire and ACH payments. And unfortunately, when we have to pay an intermediary bank, we have right. to pay that. Um, and then also, we don't get interest on our reserves, whereas banks who park reserves yeah. at the Fed are getting paid the interest on reserves, you know, five-ish percent. Big, big difference. Not right, bad. exactly. And and then, of course, there's counterparty credit yeah. risk. There's there, there, there are a lot of things tied up in not having a Fed master account. It is a fact that Custodia has had to operate with two hands behind our back. It's a big challenge. Uh, it, I can't imagine what, what you guys would look like with that Fed master account. And once the political chastising of you guys and not just Custodia, but kind of the rest of our industry, once that subsides, you, you, you know, you mentioned, you know, you spoke with the to all three candidates' teams, and you haven't really endorsed anyone for president. Would you like to take this time to endorse someone? <laughs> no, I, I don't make political <laughs> endorsements at all. Why? Um, really, because we have a mixed company, and, we, and frankly, our customer base is mixed as well. And I, I don't think it's appropriate for a bank CEO to make an endorsement of a candidate. Uh, I, the, as close as I have come is to say, that this Biden crew 
<laughs> has tried to kill <laughs> us. <laughs> and so it's a negative endorsement. Um, in, and, and, and also with Elizabeth Warren, I haven't endorsed either of her challengers. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 both of them are pro crypto. Yeah. And so, uh, um, I've come pretty close to, to supporting them, but, uh, because it would, <laughs> it would be great not to have this Biden crew and the, uh, and, and Elizabeth Warren, um, a- in positions that. of power, but, but yes, uh, we just, we, we have a mixed company and I respect that. That's amazing. Um, do you buy into the, you know, there's a campaign crypto for Harris and, you know, mm. whether you believe it's manufactured or not, like people are excited about, you know, Vice President Harris and for crypto and she's going to be different than Biden and she's going to do this, this and this. And, you know, my co-host Robin on our show brings up like you are literally in office right now. Do something, do something, say something to Biden. We know you're not the president, but you're the second most powerful person in the world. So do you believe that the the steps that the Harris campaign is taking and is saying they're going to take is a true 180 that they are going to embrace crypto or do you think it's pandering to voters i'm skeptical but i i'm willing to wait for the facts to come out okay and um you alluded to the fact that i'm talking to everybody i am yeah and uh behind the scenes talking to the moderate democrats have been all along um who are who are trying very hard to get the harris campaign to move and they have not finished their work yet and to be honest, um, folks like Wiley Nickel, yeah, um, Rokana, and Rokana, and and Richie Torres uh, have actually chatted with with a couple of those folks multiple times, yeah. and they are taking arrows from all sides. They're taking arrows from the Warrenite crowd in the Democratic Party who thinks we're all a bunch of criminals and would just as soon <laughs> to have every one of us either dead or offshore. Okay. And uh, and uh, they're taking arrows from the Republicans as well. Wiley Nickel actually was correct when he called out Trump's prior position and some of the things he said about Bitcoin yeah. on stage in Nashville and Wiley got booed. And that wasn't appropriate. Trump, it is a fact. Trump yeah. was anti-Bitcoin. He has flipped. That's great. Yeah. And uh, the more people that we can convince frankly all of us started as skeptics amen um let's, that is very true let's 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 flip an orange pill even more and i would it would be awesome if we could orange pill harris to me the most significant thing that happened in the past week was that chuck schumer came out on that town hall yes as gung-ho pro crypto and behind the scenes nancy pelosi has also flipped you can see that so why it, hasn't warren flipped what's going uh, on well they so here's an interesting thing. Um, I, I, I'm not an insider, but but very, very plugged into people who yep, are conversations. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 Schumer and Warren don't necessarily get along. Let's oh, put it that way. But okay. here's here's the other interesting dynamic. Um, she's on the Senate Banking Committee and he's yes. the senator from New York where all the big banks are. OK, so it's pretty obvious that that the anti-bank senator, or at least she says she's anti-bank, right. um, is is not going to be favored by the New York banks, right? So here's the other interesting thing. If uh, there, there are a couple of senior senators on the Democratic Party in Senate banking who have real races on their hands, including right. Sherrod Brown, who's the right now the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, and he's incredibly anti-crypto. He's yes. on the Warren side. Yes. And so- Ohio, right? Ohio yeah. and Fair Shake and some of the other PACs in our space are getting ready to, to twelve million dollars a lot of money to really support his challenger right and knock him off. But here's the funny thing: if we knock off a couple of the anti crypto Democrats, guess who the rank who the senior Democrat on Senate Banking is going to be? Is name- Elizabeth Warren. Oh, that, that's <laughs> such an interesting point. But but Kaylin, don't you think that if we kind of flex our muscles, so to say, right? that others will look and say, maybe I shouldn't be so anti-crypto. Well, I think that's where Schumer and Pelosi have have gone, which is phenomenal, right? right. We've, we've flipped skeptics into supporters. That's great. Uh, so th- I don't know that we'll ever be able to flip Elizabeth Warren or Maxine Waters. And here's the other interesting thing. A lot of people are debating, and this came up in the in the Crypto for Harris town hall that I watched. Um, uh, Schumer talked about how the Republicans were the were the ones who who decided not to bring the Stabenow Bozeman bill to the floor. That was which, a stablecoin bill, right? It's a stablecoin bill, but it would have been a broader crypto okay. bill, would have given the um, authority to the CFTC and taken it some of it away from the SEC. Uh, and I understand that that is correct. Um, um, and and what's happening is there's a debate in our space. Would we rather take a bill now that's bipartisan or wait until 
again, the Republicans think Trump is going to get elected. And if they take the House and the Senate, then maybe there is going to be a, a more industry fair bill that would be enacted under a Republican regime. But what if that doesn't happen? And what if Maxine Waters it, what if the House flips to the Democrats and Maxine Waters is chairman of financial services? Then nothing will get through. So I, I, I am coming down on the side of I'd rather take something now and try to get it fixed later if right. it's not perfect now. So two in the one in the hand is worth two in the bush. That's the saying, right? It, right. I mean, what? we've got Chuck Schumer who controls the Senate. agenda of the Senate floor behind the notion of getting a bill passed. We already saw what happened in the House. It's already right. there. Right. Right. And my understanding is that that whoever is really controlling the Biden White House right now has said that they will, if if a bill comes up from the Hill, they will sign it. So there is a very good chance. I think it's above 50-50 that crossed. a bill happens in that lame duck session after the election in November, that makes regardless sense. Of, of, of who wins. But um, I think the Republicans should be very careful not to make a deal with the devil because and, and just think that, this, that necessarily something's better coming right. after the election. Right. That's a real gamble. That's a great point. And, you know, Kaylin, my next question has absolutely nothing to do with what we've been talking about. But we are um, well, my my co-host here has pitched the idea of a crypto almanac. Okay. And uh, you're familiar with an almanac because yes. I really didn't know what it was. And um, <laughs> I'm wondering, you know, because it's going to come out in October and it's going to have an NFT tied to it. Are you are you willing to commit to purchasing one uh, when it comes? I don't have like all the quarterly forecasts. Uh, maybe we can put some custodial over it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can always just say you hate the idea so I can, you know, have some uh, firepower. I'm curious how you apply it. How would the almanac apply? Is it something that would be tied to what happens at a particular type of the four-year Bitcoin cycle? I'm staring at him right now. Uh, okay. I guess we haven't worked those details out yet, okay. but uh, <laughs> it's just funny. It's something I've been asking everyone. But I, I do want to shift now and ask you, you know, the current state of the economy, what's your views on it? And, you know, a lot of people are like, the interest rates have been high over 5%. And, you know, yeah. you have trillions of dollars either in money market funds or sitting on the sidelines. You know, Warren Buffett just has sitting on a pile of cash, right? <laughs> right. Why, when you're, especially if you can earn 5% at the Fed, Inflation's under 3%, or so the CPI numbers say. Why would I take risk in the markets when I can have a 2% arbitrage, right, on the difference right. between the inflation? So yeah. so everyone's assuming when they cut rates and you don't get that anymore, all that money's going to flow in. But I think a lot of people fail to realize that usually when you start cutting rates after they've been high, usually it's a it starts a downturn. What are your views on that? Well, you see what's called a bear steepening in the yield curve. And yeah. we saw that when it, the yen carry trade started to unwind and the yen dropped to 142, I think, at the low. Yeah. Um, and 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 it, it's, it's actually gone back up. I think it's 148 or so yeah. right now. Uh, but but long story short, um, there's a reason why they call it the bear steepening. It's yeah. not it's not because it's a good outcome. It's because the Fed has to start cutting rates in order to support the economy when the economy slows down. I will say being here in Vegas, yeah. um, first of all, sticker shock. My <laughs> God, $8 for a Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Um, and yeah. uh, it, it's just been so much more expensive than it was last yeah. time I was here. And yeah. it, just the inflation rate in the last couple of years is just stunning. But um, but but it's you can see the consumer slowdown. I mean, we're in a really beautiful part of yeah. Caesar's Palace right now, but I don't see a lot of conferences going on here. Right. I don't know what the what the rack, it, what, you know, but the butts in seats kind of rates in. It, I forget what they call that in the in the hotel business. Um, the how many hotel rooms are oh, actually uh, occupied? Occupancy rate. Occupancy, occupancy rate. rate. Yeah, yeah. It it, it definitely sends feels to me like things are a little slow. You can see the consumer slow down, and yeah. my guess is you can see it really in the numbers in in Vegas right now too. And it's true. And then you know we're living. You know, obviously we live in Las Vegas. We're, we're mm -hmm. from here, and so we see it. We see it in the hospitality industry. Yeah. Um. But Kaylin, I really want to thank you so much for your time. I feel like this is a conversation we should definitely continue and bring we you will. on our show. Uh, I just want to take the time to thank you again and. Uh, We'll see you next time. This was fun. Thanks for uh, the impromptu interview here. Yeah, thank you. That's been great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.